For me, learning is passionate self-construction. As I go whirling through a sea of ideas, I am a buccaneer scholar. This is one of the most famous photographs ever taken. There's even a book about it called Earthrise. And it was taken in 1968 by astronaut Bill Anders. And at that time, he was supposed to be taking pictures of the moon. Learning happens like that. Unexpected. It's opportunistic. It's passionate. Anyway, one spring day in 2009 in the Pacific Northwest, in the Salish Sea, on an island called Orcas, my brother and I set out to do a humble learning exercise where we find an object on a beach and we try to describe it. We're going to find an object worthy of description. We need to practice our systems thinking today. And systems thinking is all about identifying analyzing and describing systems. Now my definition of a system is a set of things in meaningful relationship to each other. Theoretically we could pick anything off the beach, any rock, any piece of algae, but we wanted something that would really catch our imagination, that would, that would immediately suggest fascinating questions. And then we found it. Okay, this is pretty cool right here. So here is a clamshell, it looks like. It's really, really purple. And uh, it's pretty unique. It stands out in this gray landscape. So this will be what we describe. Yeah. Okay. okay. Actually, we lost interest in this after about 40 seconds. So we kept looking, and then we found it. Jonathan spotted it first. A dark gray stone half buried in the sand covered in a mysterious white honeycomb formation. It looked like a moon rock, some kind of celestial object. This was worth describing. So our first step was to take pictures of it and, and then carefully get it out. Okay, it was easy to get out. We just grabbed it and yanked it out. Ah, yes, systems thinking. Let's talk about that. Let's see, everything's connected, right? Uh, there's a rock, there's our rock there, and there's uh, lots of other rocks on the beach. There's water, and the water is at different levels because this is a tide flat. The water comes in and goes out, and the water interacts with things, and it leaves driftwood all over the place, and it leaves algae all over the place, and in addition to the algae, of course, there's sand everywhere, a fine kind of silty gray sand. The moon is part of the system. The sun is part of the system. The sky and the clouds are part of the system. And then, of course, there are sea creatures like starfish and whelks and little crabbies, and they interact with each other, too. And people, people come in and trample on things and move things around and hit things with sticks and pick things up. And of course we have the barnacles. There's barnacles all over this beach. Barnacles on every surface. And everything's connected. Everything's connected. Everything's interacting with each other and exchanging energy with each other. And you know what? There are many more things I haven't even mentioned. The fun part of describing an object thoroughly is to describe how it came to be what it is. What is it contributing to? What is it a part of? That requires systems thinking. So we reason that whatever created the pattern on our stone must also be creating patterns on stones nearby. So we looked around and sure enough, right next to our stone is another stone and that stone has live barnacles on it. So we thought maybe the pattern on our stone was created by barnacles. Can you tell, tell me what that is? Looks like old barnacles. That's after five seconds of thinking. Uh, there once were barnacles there, the barnacles washed away, died, whatever, and then there's just the cement. They're you don't think they're fossils? Maybe it's fossils. fossils of recently departed barnacles. How do you know it's recent? What kind of barnacles? What did they eat? How did they get there? Why did they cluster that way? 
How old were they? Where did they go? Were they killed? Did something eat them? What kind of rock is that? Volcanic rock? Did anything other than barnacles live on the rock? I call it a learning cascade. The ever-expanding wavefront of question to answer to question again, tumbling from subject to subject. Who knows where it will end? It keeps going and going until you run out of energy and collapse. barnacles on that rock at all. So here's the status report. We're well on our way through this process, but there are so many loose ends, so many interesting questions still to be examined. And the process is about to take some unexpected turns as more people accidentally get involved. No other options this like marine biologist, for instance, in off the beach. and this the geoscientist, Where do you go? and this P-51 Mustang. All will be explained in part two of our story. Thank you for watching.